Hi friends. Over the last couple of days, we've been thinking about two metaphors for Christian living. One is pulling weeds. The other is painting masterpieces. Faith by pulling weeds is obligatory, automatic, monotonous, overwhelming in a sinking kind of way, legalistic, and diminutive. Faith by painting masterpieces is generous and inspiring, open, creative, overwhelming in an awestruck kind of way, joyful, and expansive. God's desire is not that we shrink our purpose down to pulling weeds for a living. God's desire is that we expand our life into the beauty and goodness that is created within us and around us, and to make our life a masterpiece inspired by the holy in the ordinary. Author Stephen Mosley writes, I remember a day in my early 20s when I was slouched in the back pew after a worship service, wondering, as usual, why church had to be so boring. The feeble organ music had finally trickled away altogether. Why did the religious life seem to attract mainly the old, those who didn't seem to have the energy to sin? <laughs> I was casting a disapproving eye on the smattering of old women in the church who I imagined had nothing better to do than warble these tired hymns all day. They were all sitting down one side of the center aisle, no doubt so they could slip quickly to the lobby afterward to start gossiping, I thought. There was one blind man sitting alone near the front of the church who lingered in the silence, too. No one sat in his pew. There, I thought, was someone as isolated as myself. Nothing in the service seemed to have touched him, either. This man finally rose from his pew, fumbled for a huge book thick with braille, and slipped it under his arm. He was a stocky gentleman who moved rather clumsily, Turning uncertainly, he began to make his way toward the rear of the sanctuary. Immediately, the old woman just behind him reached out and clasped his hands tightly. They exchanged a few animated words. He stepped forward, and the next woman at the aisle reached for his hands in greeting, then the next. Each woman beamed as she said his name and expressed her delight in seeing him. I realized that in this way, the women had formed an unobtrusive escort, passing him from hand to hand, guiding his steps to the foyer. He wasn't just led like some lost child. He was carried along as a celebrity. As he came closer, the man's face transfixed me. Around those sunken, glazed eyes, his features shouted joy. Even I could see that the feeble, wrinkled hands of the women had really touched him. I'd been sitting there, identifying myself by what I excluded, by what I was not. They were showing me what God is like. Those old women, as a tag team, were still running strong in the race. They had something to say, something wonderful to express about the God who leads us with cords of human kindness and with ties of love. Living a Christian life isn't a matter of cutting life down to its proper size. It's a matter of growing into the whole measure of the fullness of Christ, as Paul writes in Ephesians 4.13. It's about creating something beautiful for God, and in doing so, making the world a more beautiful place. Thanks for listening. I'll see you again soon.